Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take the Spark up for a flight. It's a rather daylight flight. It's about 3 p.m. I've got the sun to my back. I'm going to test this strobe out uh, on this during a sort of a daylight flight and see how it does. So uh, I've already checked hover. I'm good to fly here. Uh, rather nice day out here on the lake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to arm the copter and take it up. And as you see, I've got the uh, the strobe on it running. I'm going to pick it up, lift it up a little bit, so I'm kind of eye level with the strobe. Yeah, hopefully I'm getting this in frame so you can kind of see it. So the strobe is running. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to take it out, not very high, and uh, see how we can see it. So we. Let's take it up a little bit more and we just test take it up oh, I want to start the video uh, okay Need to move the button why is this acting up it doesn't want to start the copter video no I got a card in there Hmm. So I believe we have uh, that running. So uh, eh, let's just go ahead and take it up and out a little bit more. And we just keep kind of keep running it up and out. And we, so we can still see it. I'm at uh, around 300 feet. I can still clearly see it. And again, this is daylight. So I'm just going to just kind of keep going with it. and we can still see it and uh, actually this is working pretty good for daylight flight even because uh, I have this out there I can just barely see it but I can still see the flash and uh, let's see I can I'm out there trying to see this number I think 290 something it's kind of hard to see without my glasses and I can still see the flash yeah, I'm just still just taking it out there. Uh, I can still see the flash. It's getting out there a ways. Uh, I got this. Let me see with my glass. i got to change glasses to see if I can see this number on the screen here. Oh, so I'm out 500 feet. Now I put my glasses on, I can see. So I'm roughly at about 500 feet. Uh, the light is still visible. I, you probably can't see it in the hat cam, but I can still see it with my naked eye uh, or my sunglassed eye. And I'm going to say I can still see it. I'm still pushing out further. And I still got pretty good battery. I think I'm about 700 feet out. I can still see it. It's getting pretty faint, but I can still see it. I can still see it. Can still see it. I can still see it. And I'm ways out there. Just making sure everything's still clear around me. Uh, I can s think I can still see it. I think I'm out around 900 or so feet. I think that's going to be probably about about my limit. I want to take a look at the uh, my glasses. So I'm about 960 feet, and I can't really see it nor the copter out there. So around 900 feet in sunlight is is probably about the distance we'll be able to see it. Um, Okay, so uh, that's how it basically works. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it back uh, home, and uh, I'll push return to home. Activate this. I need to put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Let's activate return to home. 
So that's turning around and heading back my way. Now, one of the things while it's coming back home, I want to talk a little bit about night flights. So this apparently has spurred some discussion about night flights and that kind of stuff. So the one big thing I want to be clear about is there is a difference between recreational flying in 107 flying or licensed flying. And I am not an FAA or an aviation law expert, but I do know a fair amount of law, a bit about the law. I do spend most of my days with uh, corporate attorneys. So the, the piece is under recreational rules, it really doesn't say you can or can't fly at nighttime. It says you must maintain line of flight, line of sight, sorry. So a lot of people on the forum saying, hey, well, you know, my Phantom's got these big bad lights on it. And that's okay, you know, so I can see it at night. And sort of yes, sort of no. I can hear, oh, there it is. So I'm gonna bring it back down. So one of the things is that, well, while sort of true, I'm gonna see if I can see this as it's coming down. Uh, because I'm gonna let it get down a little bit and then and let it sit there a minute because I wanna see the light. So you can see the light flashing on it. I think as it's coming down, you can kind of see it. And I'm gonna hold it right about there for a second. So as I was saying, it, 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 it's, it's kind of a gray line there because again, there's a lot of implied safety implications to recreational flying and things like that versus 107 commercial filing. And especially since there's been some changes in the uh, regulation. But again, one of the things you have to remember about the law, just because it says you can't do something doesn't say you can do something. So again, there are expectations and case law that make up all the supporting things. So I want to be clear about that, you know, so I don't get hate mail down below because again, these, these sort of like flying vlogs and things like that, that's what they are. They're a discussion and I'm not an aviation attorney, but I am also trying to share a little bit about the hobby and being prudent about it. And so I think this is being prudent about it, you know, operating, you know, with a strobe, with indication, and trying to adhere to as much of the 107 rules. Because again, they put 107 in place for a reason. And the thing is, as the technology of these drones become more commercialized, I think we're going to see more and more implications of, of this. You know, because again, a lot of the recreational stuff was meant for like the SEMA XC5, you know, X5 and that kind of stuff. You know, the Spark, the, the uh, Mavic, the Phantom, these are all going well beyond this. And these, this is all things that the courts and, uh, you know, our lawmakers are going to have to take into account. So anyways, I just want to have a little bit of ramble with that while I share this. So again, I'm in general pretty happy with this. Now, Stan tells me there's also a three LED version, which is a lot brighter. I'm going to see if I can't score myself one of those and, and give that a test. So during, during, during bright daylight, I've got about 900 feet out of this that you can see it, and this is with the sun. Again, you can see the sun is behind me directly shining on this 900 feet. I think that's actually pretty good. I think at night or at dusk, twilight, I think you'd probably get out there far past the 1,000 feet and still see this guy. It's so bright. So anyways, again, I just wanted to ramble a little bit about this, share this with you guys. You know, we took it out there, we brought it back, and we got some interesting video. So anyways, um, hey, if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. I'll have links to this below as well as the bracket, the 3D printed bracket uh, out on uh, Thingiverse. I'll have the links down below. So hey, let me know what you're thinking about for lunch today. Me, it's the same old bologna sandwich. And uh, hey, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.